Uh, so welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees for June 13th, 2023. Time is June 602. And uh, I'll invite Jenna to call the roll. Trustee Ando. Here. Trustee Cortez. Here. Trustee Kyle. Trustee Lee. Here. Chair Vadat. Here. And at this time, I'll invite Ginger to explain how the public can participate in this evening's agenda. Thank you, Chair Vadat. This meeting tonight is being recorded and streamed live to Zoom, and members of the public can provide public comment by phone by calling 669-444-9171 using the meeting ID 836-4883-3432 pound and pressing star 9 to raise your hand for comment. Or you can comment and watch directly through Zoom using the link on the agenda and use the raise hand feature through Zoom. If you experience technical difficulties, please email library at cityofsanrafael.org. You will have three minutes to provide your comments once unmuted. We are offering closed captioning for this evening's meeting on Zoom. Select the live transcript button on Zoom to enable this feature. Great. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, at this time, I'll call the uh, first item on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes for April 11th, 2023. Um, and at this time, I'll open it up to the trustees if they have any questions or comments for the staff. All right. Uh, Ginger, are there any attendees online? No, there are no attendees. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'll move on from public comment, close public comment, and um, ask for a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of April 11th as, as uh, shown in the packet. Okay. Ginger, will you call the roll, please? Trustee Ando. Aye. Trustee Cortez. Aye. Trustee Kyle, Trustee Lee. Aye. Chair Vadat. Aye. Um, and we'll move on to uh, open time for public expression. There are no in-person attendees. And, uh, gender, are there any online attendees? No, there are not. This time I'll close uh, the open time and move on to item number two and call uh, item number two, which is a special presentation regarding automated materials handling you by uh, Daniel Cottrell. Thank you. Is that correct? Um, it's one of several appropriate <laughs> pronunciations. I say Cottrell, but Cottrell. yeah. Daniel Cottrell. Great, so share. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Is that it? Okay, yes, we're beginning. Okay, okay and then it Hopefully moves. it's not automatic. Um, okay, so this is a presentation on automated materials handling in libraries. We tend to just shorten things to acronyms, so AMH. And so a little background here. Um, AMH is not just used in libraries. It's been used in industry since the 1960s, um, very often in um, logistics settings, so sorting materials. Um, the first use in libraries was in 1997, um, and there are a bunch of different systems um, by different companies around the world. Most use RFID. Um, some use barcode scanning. The one in Napa County uses barcode scanning, uh, but we'll get into RFID next. Uh, actually, Sunny, you you probably, this is my first time meeting you, so sorry, thank you for that <laughs> reminder. My name is Dan Cottrell, I use he, his pronouns, and I'm a supervising librarian. 
T and him. Yep. And I've been here for just over a year now. Supervises circulation. So this is yeah. his area yeah. among many yeah. other things. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So RFID, radio frequency identification, um, uses radio waves encoded in little bits of metal, basically. Um, fast track is a very common example of this that you might have in your car. This was pioneered in the 70s, but the early technology was uh, used a battery. Um, the modern application does not need a battery. You don't have to plug in your fast track, for example. Um, and the um, so battery free RFID was 1996. The last slide, the first AMH was 1997. So it got adopted really quickly by libraries. Um, but when it was adopted, it was mostly just for security. So, for example, 20 years ago when I was volunteering at, as a, um, at the Fairfax Library, my main job was putting these long strips of metal in books, and that was just for security. Um, but modern RFID use, um, they encode the full barcode number, um, which can then be communicated to integrated library system, which we'll talk about soon. Um, and we're in that wide, so throughout the county, we, um, finished tagging all of our materials with RFID last year. And just in April, we um, made it so patrons can use RFID at checkout, self-checkout. So that Word ILS, uh, Integrated Library System, this is the program that stores all of our data, um, whether it's patron data um, or um, material data. Um, the name of ours is Sierra. It's made by a company called Innovative. They have a number of other ILSs that they offer as well. And this is kind of more of a legacy. So an older uh, product of theirs. Um, the first ILS was developed in the 70s, which used MARC records, which you can see over here. This an example of a MARC record. It describes Thinks about books. Um, but fast forward to the 90s with the internet, we moved from card catalogs, which had bits of those records, um, towards what we call OPACs, so online public access catalogs. So ours is Biblio Commons, which they have down here. So if you've gone to our catalog, that's our OPAC. Um, and there, we've transitioned industry-wide increasingly towards a cloud-based system. So last year we went to a cloud-based version of Sierra, so we don't have a server locally anymore. So a little overview of how this fits in together and the kind of infrastructure of how the library works. Um, the ILS keeps track of item information, the RFID encodes um, the barcode numbers, the AMH will read a barcode from an item off the RFID tag, will then ask Sierra, where should this go? And then Sierra will say, this is where it should go. And then the, the AMH would sort it. <laughs> so for a patron, they might be on their computer at home on our OPAC, Biblio Commons, placing a hold that will tell Sierra and um, this is what's up. In the morning, um, a library staff will run a list, pull an item and that's on hold, put it on the AMH, it'll go in delivery, then can be used at self-checkout. So that's kind of the life cycle. And then how does that work from like the, the when people are returning items? We will get to oh, that soon. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. They keep doing that. Okay, so our plans with, and I think we might have skipped one. Okay, so why AMH? One is efficient service for patrons, so what Phil was getting at. Um, so right here, what you see is um, a public induction system. 
So a patron can come up with an item, put it right in. It'll um, read that RFID tag and then sort just automatically. So that's very quick for patrons. It comes right off their record immediately. Um, it's also great for staff ergonomics. I've worked with an AMH at a prior system. Um, it, there's still a lot of repetitive motion, but it's um, a less injurious form of <laughs> repetitive motion. Um, and it's error reduction too. So since it's sorting automatically, it's not going to get confused between San Anselmo and San Rafael the way that human eyes will. <laughs> um, so our plans to install one, um, part of a wider renovation um, that we're looking at, we've been talking with Nolan Pam for a while now. Um, so those designs are in progress. And we want to have the AMH in our CERC room before the rest of the renovation. So we'd knock a hole in the wall um, on the first story of the 1959 editions, which is where our CERC room is. Um, and then that's where the external induction would be. Um, so we, along with Marinette, have hired the Galicia group as a consultant in this. And we went with that consultant, Marin that and Marin County Free Library staff to Sacramento to look at their system last year, kind of fact finding. Um, and another cool thing about it, or many modern AMHs, is that they're modular very often. And you can assemble and dis disassemble them. So if we get it installed and then we tear down that building in the future, build a new building, we can still use that AMH. And we can expand the AMH too. So here's some pictures from the Sacramento trip. Um, they use a machine built by Linkso, which is a Danish company. Um, so you can see kind of here, there's some rollers that will sort one way or another. Um, and there's a conveyor belt that will um, bring materials from the induction over here towards more bins this way. Um, they have a very large machine, though, because their system is a county system in Sacramento County, over 20 branches. And this was their central sorter. Um, an example of the bins that they sort into. Um, once a bin fills up, um, a staff member will move it over to the site for delivery to take care of. And here's a little video from a library in Plato. In Oregon. Maybe I, I have to do it from my end. Okay. Will the sound? Oh, it's going to sound horrible. <laughs> oh, that's right. Talk it through. Yeah. So you can see how it's working here. This is in Clackamas County, which is southeast of Portland, Oregon. Um, <laughs> this is a very important thing to include at the time. Oh, is there closed captioning? Could be. On, on YouTube. So, yes, yeah. In Sacramento, is it a hub and spoke where the books are dropped off at various of the 20 libraries? They come into a central sorting area and then they're sent spent out again? Yeah. Okay. For the most part, as I recall, that's the case. Okay, so music. Music, very good. So you can see those rollers popping up and sorting there as it goes along the belt. You'll also see that they use uh, different uh, crates. So that's something that varies quite a bit from system to system, how the crates stack. So LICC link is the name of the Danish company? And or that's, the, that's, that's the name of the library system in Clackamas County. And they're just going through all the different towns in, in that part <laughs> of okay. If you know the Willamette Valley at all, you can recognize this. Okay. Hmm. But in this system, just like in uh, Sacramento, 
there's not an external induction. So this is all staff uh, based induction. So ours would be different. Um, county was also looking at getting a, a central sorting system um, at Los Gamos. And in that case, that would also be all internal. There'd be no external induction. So ours would be different from that as well. Dan, it seems frozen. Did you want to, is there more to this that's maybe open it in YouTube? If it lets you, it's okay if it doesn't. Okay, but that's the sense of how it moves. Yeah, the sense of how it works. Um, and the one in Sacramento that I showed you, I only showed you a short bit of it. It's very long. It's one long line. You see here, this one's in a different shape. So with the modular design, you can have it work in whatever room um, or space, um, so long as there is space for it uh, that it takes. I've seen one AMH that's about the size of this desk at a very small um, mall-based library in Vancouver, Washington, and it just had two bins that it sorted to, but that was external induction. So staff could do other things as people return things and they got checked in. So there's a lot of variation and a lot of options depending on who the uh, vendor is. So. Is the plan to have it here, the main library, mm -hmm. and then the other two library facilities, at least we have, mm -hmm. would take in books and manually sort and send them over here yeah. or I'm not sure I... yeah their, their volume of circulation is a lot lower than downtown okay. so on an average day I want to say we have about a thousand circulations done by hand mm -hmm. downtown so if we shift that towards a thousand done by machine that would okay. be a great benefit um, and things would go a lot faster too because we spend a lot of time in the check room room just sorting things and this would help out with that. So there's no plan to like centralize the three libraries, bring them all, all no. the return they, books here? This plays in an interesting way with our delivery route that Marin that uh, oversees. So um, the current plan would be that they would continue doing check-in there just for expediency. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, just to be clear though, like we wouldn't be the Marine Free Library or the no. So no. there's um in the where MCFL's sort of distribution center is, it actually serves as kind of like a hub for a lot of like all of the different um locations and then delivery comes and goes through there. And so we're on a timeline right now to get this installed at our downtown library before MCFL is going to have theirs going there. So one option would be because they deal with such a huge volume that for us, we just have all of our books sort to MCFL and then they sort it. But um, that's kind of the beauty of AMHs is we could have it set up that like, okay, these are going to the children's room. These are going to adult fiction. These are adult nonfiction or this is going to San Anselmo. This is going to Larkspur. So there's different ways you can um, you can like program it. But I'm thinking it'll just be that like ours, since we take in so much circulation of items at our downtown library, I think we're the second highest. Uh, yeah, we're the top three pretty yeah, consistently. We take in so many books that it'll probably just go to the different library locations. Yeah, we probably get a 10 bin sorter. And how we divide that up is up to us. And it's also been something that we could change just based off of programming. And the current timeline is um, I have pretty much finalized an RFP, a request for a proposal that I'm going to release on July 5th. And then um, I'm thinking because we always shut, we'll do the whole process of selecting a vendor. And then um, we generally shut down for one week in over winter break. So that would be a good project, a good time to install that this coming winter. And Dan helped with that RFP quite a bit. So it was a good time. Yeah. What's the expected cost? I mean, that you know the other. Yeah. So the um we got a sort of like baseline quote that's from Lingso maybe two years ago, maybe a year ago, and it was looking at 133. And this could come out of actually our um we have like a 
which we could use we have a fund balance for operations because it's not capital it's a it's like seen as machinery because you know it's just like if we get a new library building it could go into that it would go into that new library so we can use operation budget set aside money that we have out of our um, parcel tax we have a good chunk of savings there that could pay for this but it would have to go before council because it's lar large over like mine and Catherine's purview to approve yeah and city manager's purview is there a concern that with automation uh It'll be no. <laughs> that would be amazing, Jamie. If we could, <laughs> but we are so like, it's just like a pressure. I mean, we're like, we have the staff we need, but people, if people could have more time to do programming or to be yeah. on the desk, and if this could automate that work, like we are into that. Like, yeah. And it doesn't completely replace circulation work. It just makes a big part of it easier. So yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to having staff freed up to be able to do other things. <laughs> Uh, based on the video, so it's like it could be really long mm -hmm. okay, conveyor basically. Yeah. How many, like 20 bins you could sort compared mm -hmm. to what you're talking about, about like a 10 bins yeah. to sort maybe that's the yeah. kind of goal, but it's a flexible in a way. Like, yeah, absolutely. The um, section that we had portioned up was 14 feet. Yeah. yeah. So, where we go? So, and just to give us a sense of how we could move that room around because we'd have to do some extensive rearranging in our circulation room so there'd be an um, induction point for patrons that would be outside the building um, and then that would go if you're in like our lobby where that wall is where the checkout like desk where used to be where the yeah room, okay. there's like a room where we yeah. still do all check-in work and that it would just live in there and yeah. and we wouldn't have to go outside and empty a bin from that blue box anymore right, yeah. So, much better on everybody's yeah. body. My daughter's <laughs> well, <laughs> No, no she's could, so much cooler. <laughs> she could check it in immediately. And we were uh, thinking, like, what if there was like a window where you could see like the book? You know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and that, some libraries do have that. Like, when I worked in Vancouver, Washington, a lot of the extern external inductions did have windows. Kids love to watch yeah. it. Yeah. I have to this 2005 or six <laughs> in Michigan. And you just drop the book, ding, 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 ding. You hear the sound. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, seven books are dropping it wow. just right there. It checked out. And I didn't know. <laughs> you, know you can see inside what's going on, but now it makes sense now. There's, um, and so, like, the, the reason we can do this now, this is not new technology. RFID is certainly not new, new technology, as Dan said, is that we just got to a point where all of our consortium has those RFID tags. And that was, you know, we're probably about 10 years behind, I would say, in terms of other big library systems getting that. But now that we have that, that's like the um, crucial for this to work. So yeah. that's the next step. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Should we pull up the new system magnetic whatever that oh, yeah. the, the pad yeah the pad mm -hmm. just stick them all up yeah like, people love it yeah. uh, again breaking little kids hearts though because they don't have the because <laughs> you can scan the card and then it's like <laughs> she she loves like picking up the thing and like find the barcode you still do that yeah you might accidentally use the rfid just by moving the get the beep. But... Yeah, yeah yeah it's all about the beep <laughs> okay <laughs> So again, put an R thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this the staff free up. There should be one sticker. <laughs> sticker hander ever. Um, Not on this, but in general, I know this is part of the being funded by part uh, in part from the grants that you received. Earlier this year, I believe. No. no. Okay. So, no. no. So um, those, um, we have like those three. Uh, basically, have three million dollars. One is the building forward grant. That's mm -hmm. for capital. That's for life safety, new roof, new HVAC, getting things up to um, ADA standards. We the city put forth the library put forth a one million dollar match, which is the same thing. And then we have a million dollars called the targeted grant from Mark Levine that we can spend on carpet 
whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mm -hmm. all capital improvement. This is operational. So that's where we're using mm -hmm. that parcel tax balance. So mm -hmm. it's kind of tricky to think like, is this capital or is it operational? But the sort of test is if you pick the building up and shook it, would it fall out? And if we <laughs> unscrewed it, it would. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> and same with our um, mobile shelving, we could use that fund balance for as well. And I ask, I guess, because uh, the reason we were um, delayed or did not have a meeting in May is because yeah. we weren't ready to talk about Correct. this or the the other part of it. This would have been fine to talk about. Okay. We're still um, we're still waiting on, we okay. heard some things come up with those design plans. So, um, but you will be included in that process. I can say more about that because it's not on the agenda, but. Um, I assume you're going to about the staff report. Yeah, so my staff report is about summer reading though. Oh. My, oh, sure, I can update then. So, um, well, uh, unless anyone else has anything about item number two, I'll open it up to there's no one in, in person, gender, are there any online attendees or comment, public comment? Shake this up. So, I'll assume. Okay. Um, and uh, we already gave public comment, so I'll close. Or we've given trustee comments, so I'll close item two and move on to agenda item three, which is a welcome to new board members. And that's pretty much all that it is, but sunny <laughs> welcome. Um, we have uh, trustee Lee and we have trustee Kyle, who's unable to make it today, but um, gave gender notice. So, and we have trustee Ando as well. Mm -hmm. You're in your first term um, and also now one of the more senior board members. <laughs> So, um, yeah, thank you all for being a part of the uh, people who've been here a while, too, for being a part of the board. It's really important for um, our function and for public open government as well. So, um, Well, I, I mean, uh, I would love to know a little bit more about you. So if you'd love to introduce yourself to the rest of us, because it's my first opportunity <laughs> to meet you. Thank you. Uh, Sunny Lee, and I'm mother of two kids now. Graduate from high school and younger ones in uh, going to the junior next year in Sarah, Seneca High School. I've been here 25, 26 years like that. And a library becomes such a my passion, you know, the thing, you know, such an open, open space that city provides to all the families uh, and the children and seniors and People like me who are just always curious and I can't keep up with uh, buying new books <laughs> every, every day. Amazon keep feeding me. So, you know, library become a natural source of a place. And, and having uh, lived in New York City and visiting many cities and always curious about visiting libraries in different cities. And first thing we go when we visit my in laws in Michigan, that's going to their, their library to check out 40, 40 books and uh, videos <laughs> and DVDs for kids. So, uh, so having experienced the, you know, get just full benefit, benefit from the library services, I've been so grateful for the, uh, this department in our city. And I thought, I could help even more, get even more better than you know, it's hard to hard to do, but that uh, we have good just a little uh, minority voice to the library. That's uh, something I thought about doing and I'm kind of honored and I was really surprised to be appointed. <laughs> so thank you for your service and happy seeing you in the uh, couple of board meetings I attended online. And hopefully I could learn. Lab from you guys. <laughs> from me. Sunny, appreciate it. Pleasure Thank to meet you. you. Um, we've got no in person attendees, and uh, I'll throw it to gender if there's anyone online. Fine. Thank you, Alex. It would be nice if oh. you we introduced, unless you yeah. did. I don't you know. Please. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can share to me. Go ahead. Right. Uh, <laughs> my name is Alex Vidat. I've uh, been on the board now for a number of years that I can't remember because everything bled together in the pandemic, but it's been at least one, not two. 
And uh, I live in Terra Linda um, with my wife and young daughter, who's four um, and runs our household. And we unfortunately didn't get a lot of use of the library during the pandemic, but have now been using it more and more. And um, my daughter loves it. So we uh, have a great time going down to the downstairs area where she can run around with books, but with everything. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's my story. Um, Sonia, I think I introduced myself at the interview process. Yeah. We talked a little bit offline and um, again, uh, been here for about 25 years, so in Peacock Gap. Uh, my son and daughter went through Glenwood, Davidson, and one of them went through San Rafael High. Um, they're both out of college now and living in New York City doing tech stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but when they were going through all the schooling here, the library was just one of the key places that, especially when they were young, that we would be, we were here at least a couple of times a week, just um, in the kids, in the kids library, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, this was really such a critical and important resource for the city that um, I just wanted to give back. And now that I'm retired, hopefully I can do that. So that's why I'm here. Hi, uh, Jamie Cortez. I've been here like a hundred years. Uh, so, um, somewhat the historian I, <laughs> of the board. Um, I have been in San Rafael, Tara Linda, uh, neighbor of <laughs> um, a 10 year old, and uh, basically joined. I know she was a baby. She was, my daughter, she was like, really? I mean, my daughter has like known all the staff for <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> Um, but I, uh, you know, started at story time back then, and um, we, you know, I joined the library because when we moved here, we knew no one, and the library was really our first community that we built, and so really, we did. I got the agro. Yeah. And it's great to see the Jill's been like the third iteration. So they've, yeah, been here, they've been here. And I'm super excited. It's amazing. And she I'm just, sunny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I want to say thank you all. And I, I, Jamie and I have both seen the board for, I've been here for eight years. Um, and I think it's, this is the most diverse set of opinions we've ever, or I don't know, just demographics, different ages, different backgrounds. And um, it really is important to get young people with young children and middle grade kids and people who have grown kids, um, you know, older adults, everybody, we're all library users and members of the public. So I appreciate you all. And I think, um, yeah, it's been nice having you around, Jamie, for a while. <laughs> We've seen a lot. Well, Jillian, would you like to? Sure. So, Sunny, you know me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, but yeah. So I, um, I don't know if I've like formally introduced myself, to, I'm, like in terms of like giving you my background at all. But um, I've been at the San Rafael Library since 2015. I started as an on-call children's librarian, and then in 2016, I became um, a children's librarian. That's where I met both of you. Um, and then I've been a supervising librarian for the past number of years, and this is my new role since January. Um, I live in Oakland, um, and what's just there to say about me? You know, I just love serving the community and um, love it. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you all, and thank you for your service. Um, we did the public comment, um, so we'll go ahead and close. <laughs> I've been uh, with the oh am I oh I'm good okay uh, I've been with the library since uh, 2011 uh, and as um, supporting uh, administrator uh, the library director um, just dealing with budgeting and uh, supporting the staff with all kinds of things <laughs> Thanks, Ginger. Well, I mean, Daniel just ran out of the room as soon as he yeah. <laughs> Ginger, Ginger's off off camera. So yeah. sorry, Ginger. I, I I hear you and I appreciate you. This is incredible. Um, we would do without him. So now I think I'm good to close item yeah. number. Three. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, on to item number four: uh, selection of chair and vice chair. 
And so I'll call that agenda item. Um, I think we've had a lot of board turnover since uh, Trustee Duke Hughes and Trustee um, Lentini left. So now we have to pick a chair and a vice chair. I don't mean to just grab the gavel and be chair. So um, you're doing great. Uh, <laughs> so no, no, uh, go ahead, Jason. You're this. Well, so you're still technically vice chair, so we would be appointing because, and we usually do it by tenure, right? Because um, uh, trustee Len, uh, chair Lentini actually didn't finish out her terms. Gotcha. Yeah, yes. we'll do that. And um, yeah, we usually go by, you know, Alex has been here the longest, and then it would be the next person, which would be Larry. But um, it's up to you all to vote. So what I don't know, Jamie, why? Because well, Jamie's I've been, been chair, like a hundred times. Also yeah. it, it, it rotates. rotates. So we want to read that with Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's a benevolent dictator, letting her time go. Uh, do I motion? Uh, yeah, so, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So well, I guess we need to. Um, no comment. No, oh, we okay. ask for comment. If there's any other comment from the trustees about the recommended action, is the point. Me as chair and Larry as vice chair. And then any anyone on online gender? Now Jamie. Okay, no so public comment. Thanks. I recommend uh, the action to appoint Trustee Vidal as chair and Trustee Abdel as vice chair. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Trustee Ando seconded? Uh, uh, I, Trustee, I Lee. Lee. Trustee Lee. Trustee Lee. Okay, got it. Uh, and uh, Ginger, will you call the roll? Oh. Yes. All right. Trustee Endo? Um, I, I just want to clarify, I'm certainly voting for um, the doc, uh, a chair, or Alex, Alex <laughs> as chair, but can I vote for myself? I'm not sure that that's clear to me, but certainly my vote for for Alex. I think, I, th I think you're voting for the whole motion. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, then I vote for the whole motion. Aye. <laughs> okay, uh, Trustee Cortez. Aye. Trustee Kyle. Trustee Lee. Aye. Chair Vadat. Aye. Okay. okay. Thank you, Ginger. Congratulations. Um, and thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, move on to item number five, uh, summer reading plans. Sorry. Oh. Question. How, how long are these? One year. One year. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have written a staff. I'm <laughs> realizing. <laughs> but yes, it'll be one year. And then generally the um, vice chair would um, move into the chair position. And then it would be the next person by tenure who hasn't had it yet. Um, so, and if it's, um, if it's the same tenure, if it was, if it would be like sunny and uh, uh, Trustee Lee and Trustee Kyle, it would be, um, I think my last name is how the city kind of outlines it in the charter. Um, Thanks. Okay, so I will share about summer reading, which you've all probably experienced in some iteration or another. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sharing my screen, I certainly am not. PowerPoint, so I'm always kind of looking for the things. Okay. So let me move this. No, wrong one. It is summer reading time. Um, background is just that we've all, I don't know, I couldn't find the date, but historically we've always provided children with a summer reading challenge. I couldn't say since when, but certainly mm -hmm. since 1986 when Holly was here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, children are tracking their reading, they're earning prizes. And then in addition to that, we give a number of different programs um, for people of all ages through the months of June through August. Um, through the years that I've been here, and I know from before that, I've seen many different iterations. I've been a part of developing many different iterations in the children's department. Um, when I started, we had a paper-only program. 
where kids, kids could choose to track by day, by time, or by pages read. It was very complicated, and every there were different benchmarks where you earned a prize. Um, a few years back, we had a hybrid virtual and paper program where you could uh, read by day or complete activities, and we had this little outside vendor that you could earn badges with online, which people, <laughs> whatever, you know, it was, <laughs> we tried it. <laughs> so here on the side, you can see, um, I just pulled a couple of different of our themes from previous years. A universe of stories, I think, was 2019. Read for the win, I think, was 2016 when we had the Olympics. And often they're they're used to we used to lean into the themes. Um, post pandemic, we're kind of trying to simplify and be mindful of our own capacity and also recognizing that we want to have energy all year long to do library programs. And um, so we've been sort of trying to scale back a bit. Um, for more background, so this is the log we've used since 2019. We partnered with um, Marin County Free Libraries to have an evergreen log, no dates, just tracking um, any day that you read. We recommended 20 minutes, but it didn't matter if you read for five minutes or 40 minutes. You just checked it off. And at um, the 20th point, you got a prize, which is a new book. Um, and in addition to that reading program, we really focused on outreach. So we were visiting um, the Marin YMCA and the BACR, Bay Area Community Resource Summer Enrichment Sites to hand out logs and free books to participating students and usually an activity as well. Um, these sites are special because they are put on by the San Rafael City Schools. They are free and the children who attend have been identified as the most in need of summer support. So we were really trying to reach the kids that um, would most benefit from getting outreach. And then any kid that um, didn't go to one of those sites, which is many kids in San Rafael, um, would just come to the library to pick up their logs. So it was for everybody, but we did targeted outreach for kids who needed it the most. Um, so this is now 2023. Um, we designed a new bilingual log this year. We're not partnering with the county anymore. It's still very simple. It's bilingual in English and Spanish, and by we, I mean Basha. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are, same thing, we're challenging students in grades K through six to pick up a book or audiobook and read for at least 20 days this summer. Same thing, no, doesn't matter if it's five minutes, doesn't matter if it's three hours, everyone has different abilities and capacities and just reading is um, what we wanna focus on. Uh, they track their reading on their log, they return it to any of our three branches and they receive a new book to keep. And something really exciting this year is um, as long as I've been here, we've partnered with Scholastic. Uh, they have been a little challenging in a number of different ways. And also the books that we receive tend to not be, it's like we get these packs and at the top, you see like the Raina Telgemeyers and the good stuff. And then underneath it's stuff that no kid wants. So then we have a closet full of books that no kid wants. Are they like, ah, actually, I don't want to take a book at all. But this year we, um, Dan set up an account with Copperfields on 4th, and um, we worked with uh, some of our children's librarians to purchase uh, just a few, sorry, a few options of <clears throat> high quality books. So instead of having a million things to choose from, each age group has, say, like three, and the kids can walk away with something they really want. <clears throat> and that is more expensive, but we are getting a discount. Another <clears throat> key thing that we're doing this year, we have a really great partner, the new um, city, uh, the new school librarian at the Santa Rafael City Schools. Her name is Tess Henderson, and she's been a really active partner. She, um, we sent 3,500 3, logs to her and every kid in grades K through six at a San Rafael City School um, got a log with all of our activities on the back. So um, we're having a higher reach than ever before. And again, kids in grades K through six who go to a private school or a Miller Creek school, um, they can visit our libraries to pick up a log. Um, we've been promoting elsewhere as well and also attend our grants. And here's the log. It's very beautiful. Um, Bosch is a very talented, you know, it's they're not a graphic designer, but they kind of are. So it's really simple. Same thing, you just get to 20 days. There's space for them to write their favorite books if they want. The log is totally bilingual. 
and very simple. And um, and then on the back of it, it had all of our activities as well. So simple and easy. Um, again, we're partnering with San Rafael City Schools, YMCA, and Bay Area Community Resource to um, do outreach visits. Dan, um, he's in charge of outreach, so he planned all of those. Um, we'll be going to six sites. We'll be handing out giveaway Copperfield books that would be in addition to the books the kids receive at the end. So kids at these sites will be getting two books if they participate in the program. Um, we'll be reaching just under uh, 1,200 students and we'll be promoting library programs and services and handing out the books. Um, we're not gonna be handing out logs because they already got the logs uh, through their school. And um, in terms of programming, we uh, staff have done a great job planning a bunch of different free, of course, it's library, literacy, art, recreational, and cultural programs for patrons of all ages, not just school age kids. We've got author talks, puppet and magic shows. Uh, we have this really cool bicycling um, program and a series of bicycling programs with trips for kids. We have some park trips, uh, drawing classes for various ages, and also a number of different special story times with like park rangers. We're also doing like a nighttime sleepy story time, which will be super cute. Um, in terms of promotion, staff, and by staff, I mean Basha again, <laughs> created a promotional trifold brochure. Um, that we're handing out at our libraries, and we also are sending them to all San Rafael community centers and pools, which we haven't done in the past. Um, Bosch put together an email uh, to all San Rafael residents with library cards. You all probably receive those um, with all of our promotional, promoting all of our summer offerings, and all of our materials were bilingual in English and Spanish. So here's what that trifold, the back of it looks like. Um, and I don't think I included the front of it, but it just, you know, says like, it, these are the activities, basically. We divided it by um, month, by age group, and it's very basic. People can look online to get more information, but the big thing we wanted was all on one sheet, um, all ages, all months, and English and Spanish together. And just in terms of measuring impact, uh, we're going to be looking at the no metrics, like the number of logs we distributed. Um, we always track participants who attend our programs, um, number of books we distribute, and then just, of course, feedback from patrons as well. Um, I'm really curious this year because of handing out the logs and because of putting our stuff in multiple locations, if we're going to see um, more program attendees is really what I'll be looking at. Um, and in terms of cost, of course, there's no fiscal impact of review, <laughs> you all reviewing this, but um, we are ju spent just under um, $19,000 this year. Our friends were really generous with us. Um, we have a little bit more money than um, we've been given in the past because we were so underspent during the pandemic. And that's part of the reason we're able to like work with Copperfields and really offer a lot of great programs. Um, so thank you to our friends, as always. And that's it. Questions on summer? Thanks a lot. Now, I do have a comment. I'm, uh, I commend you on um, upgrading the quality of the books yeah. that are given away this year and the fact that we're supporting Copperfield's local, our local bookstore. So on both of those counts, I, I think that's, uh, those are both excellent uh, changes that you've made. Yeah, I think so too. I think um, it is considerably more expensive to go through Copperfields yeah. as it should be, right? Yeah. Um, their local business, the books are very high quality. Um, we are getting a discount. They've been really great partners to us. We have an account set up and it's just whether or not we have enough funding to be able to continue to do that in future years. But so far they've been fantastic. I think the kids will appreciate getting books they really yeah. want to read. Yeah. Again, I, I think those are both very positive things, yeah. and hopefully we can continue that process next year. Definitely okay. second that for yeah. sure. Um, what, so, does the is there this may have missed this? Was there a start date for the summer reading program? Because I know some <laughs> schools are like starting to get out now. So that's kind of funny. That's uh, we didn't put explicit dates on our log. Um, log, this looks like this, which is great. We can use it again next year. Uh, but because an, an outcome we didn't foresee happening because these were handed out like mid-May to kids 
kids are coming in with their logs <laughs> and you know it's mid-june they've had a month they've read 20 days and whatever i don't care if they read in may it's yeah, early june great. but um i think that will be something we do next year maybe is put the dates on well the my follow-up question was just going to be have what have you seen any impact? Because I don't know if it had like started yet. If it's like, is it really yeah. like the start of summer? Is it like, you know, June yeah, 22nd? Or started. Or it, so that's great to see that there's been impact. Yeah. We're busy on the kids right now. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, we had, um, an office well, that's it's really great to see that it's having a big impact. But, uh, and then other question, has there been any thought um, to reach out to Canal Alliance to work with them at all? Um. In what capacity? Just in terms for of outreach, like, yeah, we like haven't YMCA done that. BCR. So the reason we work with what I would say about that is most, I would generalize and say most all of the kids who Canal Alliance serves are served by the San Rafael City Schools, mm -hmm. and also a lot of them are probably in those BACR and YMCA programs, but in terms of, like, I think that would be a good partner to engage with to give them our promotional materials in the future. Um, but the kids that are attending those camps largely live in the canal. Right. So it's good. Thank you. They are a great partner. That's a good point because the multicultural center now is right down here, too. Mm -hmm. That's a really great. Yeah. Thing to put. Definitely. I forgot they moved. Yeah, yeah the right. I mean, mm -hmm. I haven't been to the new space. <clears throat> They're a good partner as well. And just as a historian here, too, <laughs> I think, Jill, you probably remember that they used to get ginormous candy bars. They would finish their blog. No, that was before me. Oh, yeah. There would be like maybe candy bars. So I love that they're getting booked from Copperfield. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't think I ever saw the giant candy bars. I saw Giants tickets. That was weird. I mean, it was like the, yeah, you know, just kind of like quite extravagant. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the cost would be more than $19,000. Donated to us. I shouldn't say it was weird. It was wonderful that they donated it to us, but there's kind of this thing where you give a kid a Giants ticket and then they have to get there and they yeah. have to like pay for a hot dog. And, you know, that's really easy for some, a lot of families to do. And it's, kind of sucks to like I have my Giants ticket but how are we going to get there and how are we going to afford that yeah and it was uh, we got two tickets and never got to go yeah <laughs> and they're on school nights <laughs> but I remember some of those parents in the my kids school parents actually they went there the father yeah. and son, but because of it actually allowed them it was actually one other one child ticket you get two because a kid yeah. can't come to Chinese yeah. by himself. Yeah. So but, the other ticket was covered. Yeah. So it was almost like, a, okay, I could see why they are pulling. But in that case, they would actually spend more money on yeah. things. And so. then the other family member wants want to go and but they can go. Yeah. Uh, is it? Because uh, I remember uh, always getting the Friends of Library like a ticket. Yeah. Uh, we right. That was cool. We used to have a little coupon, mm -hmm. not a coupon, a ticket One. that um, when they would finish, they'd get their little ticket and they could take it over to the friend's bookstore and choose a book. And that yeah. was great. Um, we stopped doing that during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And now we're moving to just handing out the books, for the new ones. Um, mm -hmm. Do there are any chance like a friend's a library? I'm going to be constantly like I don't want to do that so yeah I think um I, they had yeah it's not the, the um, route we're going it. yeah I think uh, could you talk about there's certain books uh, the kids like to mm -hmm. as a prize is it like uh, you mentioned like six books like eight books or I don't know I wasn't in a part of that but I know it was a limited number of books that uh, Margaret okay. one of our children's librarians yeah. identified as being like these are books that at least you know kids have not one of these books but it's not in a huge array because then you get like decision paralysis yes <laughs> comments will open it for uh, uh, I, was sorry, thinking, I was thinking that sometimes it's great to for the top of the books like almost like a coupon 20 mm -hmm. percent coupon or something then 
actually they end up going to the bookstore because of you just got the discount and end up buying more books by parents mm -hmm. and they go for the business. Yeah, I think that's not like super in our mission. We used to kind of do more like stuff with local businesses in that way where people would like win a coupon or something, but it's actually not really appropriate as like we're using them as a vendor. We're yes. purchasing stuff from them, but we don't want to be like, hey, community, like go to this bookstore, not this mm -hmm. bookstore, because we are public stewards and it's it kind of crosses some weird boundaries. So we kind of got to a place where people used to kind of go out into the community and hustle yeah. <laughs> during the summer reading, like, oh, I'm going to GameStop. They're going to give us this and I'm going to like this place. And then I think at some point that was sort of like we regrouped and realized that that's not really um, it kind of crosses some weird boundaries. And I think having a coupon for, we don't give up coupons. That's yeah. something that yeah. we, we just have to be ice cream. free. Yeah. yeah. Free we used ice to cream give the double it. rainbow yeah. free ice cream, but yeah. we wouldn't give like, I wouldn't get one. So that's a little weird. Yes. Yeah. But we do love Copperfields. <laughs> um, and also I'll open it for public comment. There are no in-person attendees, gender. Is there anyone online? No online attendees. Thank you. Uh, close public comment and uh, close item five and move on to uh, item six, which is staff liaison reports. Okay, so um, one of the reports, which is why we had canceled our May meeting. So we got a little behind, um, sending we are working and refresher. We're working with um, Nolan Tam Architects who will be doing a $3 million modernization project of the downtown library. Um, I think I was explaining earlier, 2 million for life safety upgrades, 1 million set aside for other nice things. Um, I was working, I'm working with the architects to come up with plans. They presented some plans to me, but then when we got the shopping list, they were very out of our budget. And I think they were surprised by that as were we, and the plans were just so not viable that I can't present them to you. So um, they are working on, uh, we also had to talk with um, some code enforcement and fire marshal to see like what uh, what is required with this a project of the scale because that impacts our budget considerably. If we need to put in fire sprinklers, that's gonna eat up a huge chunk of our budget versus a fire alarm. If we need to um, have nine bathrooms because that's what code requires our whole budget would be bathrooms so we were talking with these different officials to kind of get um figure out what we actually need to do and what we want to do um we're in that place where the architects are designing um they're coming back with some new designs and i should have some designs to share with you in july that'll be the main thing we talk about this will be the um that money wasn't really none of it could be used for really in-depth kind of community engagement. And we're also recognizing that this is a, this isn't our end goal to have a $3 million renovation. Like we're, we're really wanting to try and get a new building at some point. This is to get us safe and have our roof not leak. So we're not able to do a huge community engagement process. So this board meeting will kind of be, you'll serve as like the public, um, comment. If we have any members of the public, they'll be able to give feedback and then um, we'll give that to the architects and they'll be able to um, make changes or move forward and um, we'll go from there. The funds do need to be spent, I believe, by March 2026. So we're on a, on a timeline. <laughs> yeah. Um, other update. Uh, so I don't know if, it, no, you probably I don't know if you would have received this as whatever. Um, so with a foundation had put together that really nice um, social media campaign with the video, people were telling me that they saw me talking about how we need a new library. Um, that was a really wide reach. I know a lot of people saw it. And then that was leading up to this poll that we commissioned with the outside research firms. Um, we pulled, they, they pulled 622 individuals half split sample, statistically valid, half were asked about a combined community center for Albert Park, um, half were asked about a renovation and expansion of the existing Carnegie. We are, um, the poll is closed. We're pulling that, they pulled that data um, and then we're not 
we I we're not quite at a place to look at it yet, but um, once we get that information, that'll be telling of what our next steps might be in terms of pursuing an actual new library. And it would be parcel tax. That was what people were asked about. Okay. Well, we've done like so many of those polls. I know. Like, what what are they hoping to see different? Well, what they're hoping is so. There's really two options. Three options. One is we don't do anything, but there's really two options to get us to a new library. If if we do a poll that's statistically valid and it comes back and it says, yeah, you have fifty percent support with a four percent margin of error. The, the city can't put that on the ballot, you know, like there's no reason to, it's not going to pass. So they've done some tweaks. It's different. Um, there's different, you know, we were combined with a few different other um, potholes and stuff before it was a transfer tax was the previous poll. This is parcel tax. It's just library. These are your two options. And we're looking to see like, would people support that? If we can get that two thirds majority, that's something the city would consider putting on the poll if it looks promising. If it doesn't look promising, then another option would be a citizen-led initiative. But, you know, there's no, the reason they do the polls is because they want to see if there's any chance. And they're pretty, the guys know what they're talking about. People that do it are really good. So the same reckon, company has said it wouldn't pass last year. It wasn't the company that said it. It was the vote, potential yeah, voters. But I mean, so yeah. It's the same company. Yes. Neighbors or got text message. They thought it was a fishing stand. Yeah, I know it kind of looks like that. So at least the five people I know, they got it. They didn't do it. They yeah, busy. <laughs> they were busy actually. They didn't have time. Yeah, take it to so forty-five they, minutes. They mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, mentioning to me and it seems like the four and he said. Oh, I should do it now. Oh, it's over. And oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he did get enough people to do it to close the poll. Yeah. So, um, so I have a question about because so I guess my the background here is I know that uh, Larkspur got a huge grant I think last year to build a new library. Um, one of the things that I was disappointed in is the fact that you know Larkspur is such a small community, got all this money to build a whole new library, and like San Rafael, super diverse, much bigger than Larkspur. And I think, you know, we got a million dollars and you know, that's not enough to build a new library, obviously. But I was wondering, is there any, because um, I know you're saying these 3 million in grant funds have to be spent by the by 2026. Is there any way to see, you know, if this poll comes back favorably for a tax, is there any way to then parlay that $3 million and save it for a library to build a new library if this poll comes back favorably? Because I think, wouldn't it just be great if we could, really focus on a new library as opposed to, you know, fixing what we have. But if mm -hmm. voters are actually going to say, okay, no, I was, I support a parcel tax and we also have the $3 million, then we really have some, you know, room to run with in terms of a new library. So no, and the funds have really specific specifications for how they're used. Um, one of them is that the, they have, well, if if it would be if it would look like the Carnegie would be an option, that's three million dollars that have, that's kind of going towards that new library, right? If it's not the Carnegie, then um, then that would be a, a conversation that I'd have to go back to because one of the the stipulations of this money is that it the the building has to remain a public library for ten years, mm -hmm. so. We probably have to get it back. <laughs> Those that money. Um, okay. Commissioner reports. I guess that's your role to. Oh, are, are, so we're done with staff reports. Yeah. Okay. That's all uh, well, open up to public comment because I have to ask gender right. If there's yes. A sorry. Okay. I'm no in-person attendees. <laughs> no, you're like I'm done. I'm like that was you were hitting the firing squad. Yeah. Uh, gender any online attendees. Oh, mm. great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Was item number six and move on to item number seven, um, which are brief reports on any meetings, conferences, or seminars that trustees have attended. Um, I have attended none. But Training. Training. Trainings. Seminars. I had a couple of, of comments, which, have, which we've talked about over the last couple of months since we haven't met. One was, and again, I'm new to this, 
Um, I know that there has been in the past an annual report of this commission, mm -hmm. but there's nothing at least online since 1920. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we will can we just do at um, uh, in the spur of the moment or? How does that, it, it, are we required to? No, that? you're not required. Okay. And I, I know that Catherine had followed up with the city clerk, but okay. I forget what the answer was on that. All right. So um, we can wait. Until, yeah. I mean, I, there's no big rush here. I just, I noticed it and I thought, yeah, should we be doing it's some It's definitely kind not of required thing? by the city or by the bylaws or the uh, you know, rules of boards and commissions. I don't know the, that. What was in the report? I'm it's very brief. It was like um, these were the major areas that we um, worked on in 2019. It was about, I don't think it was more than a page or so. Yeah, um, and I'm sorry, I don't have it here, but it, it was something that I saw, what, about a month ago, Jill, and mm -hmm. we had that. We had a quick conversation on it. it and, um, yeah. Anyway, right. but, Myself, but it is on the website. That's where I found it. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, I was just wondering if that's something we, we would normally do or. Uh, I think after COVID, everyone forgot. You yeah, know, okay. after, kind of, right. like, one of those. That was my suspicion. Too, yeah. Because it was like 2019. And then, yeah, like I said, it's not like, oh, boards and commissions have to do this. I'm right. not sure what the right. history was on that. Again, it's more, more of a first. Timers. No, but yeah, I appreciate your being thorough and yeah. Um, and actually, Alex, I had a question for you. You were on the Rec Study Commission, the large group of folks who just um, produced the report and then it was accepted by the city. Is there anything from the library's perspective that you saw on the? Well, I was an alternate, so Sharon oh, was the one, sure. who was, okay. uh, one who handled it. Um, so I don't have That's any, any mm -hmm. reference to respond right. to that. Those were the only two things I had. Yes. All right. Uh, well, then I will close item number seven and uh, adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Great job, Hi. Alex. Iron yeah. fist. What? Oh. Yeah. Um, July should be, I believe. We didn't do the, August. We didn't do August, or we didn't? Um, August and December are dark. July, we should do the 11th, I believe, unless. Yeah. It's the 11th. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I will not be here. Okay. I, I, then yeah, just let gender know when he sends the packet out. Thank you, gender. Thanks, gender. Okay, thank you. All right, meeting is adjourned as of seven ten. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, what time is um?